Today on the show, strategy plus action equals gratitude, transformation, and the strength of service. Success in business and life is a constant back and forth of charting your course and taking the consistent steps every day to move you forward. Both are critical. My guests on this show range from hardworking entrepreneurs starting from scratch to visionary leaders of cutting edge companies looking to scale. I help you understand the strategies that are working for them and the actions you can take to model their success. For me, a show like this is all about joining forces with my guests to dig deep and create something new for you. Whether that's a small insight to get you unstuck or a path of massive growth through customized marketing and creative sales initiatives. Welcome to Strategy in Action. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode 30 of Strategy in Action. Today, we are talking with the great Danny Galvez. I am so excited to bring his energy and his insights and all of that to you. Um, I've known Danny for a few years now, happened to meet him at, a, at an event years ago. And from the moment we met, I was just struck by his amazing openness and energy and everything. And I've only seen more of that over the years, um, interacting with him, seeing him, you know, on social and, and everything. And you know, as I've watched him tell his own story of transformation and just gratitude and everything that he has in his going on in his life, um, I realized that there's there's so much power to that, and I really wanted to bring that to you um, in this discussion that I have with him because not only are these great things to understand and utilize for your life in general across the board. Um, but it's also good business, right? It's it's great business when you can understand people, when you can navigate relationships, listen really well. That's something that we dig into a lot. And those skills are so valuable in business, in running a successful organization, or simply dealing with your clients. You know, if you're freelance, working on your own, um, all super powerful stuff. And and just his journey that he's been on and his unique way of sharing that journey and why he does it, those are some things that we dig into. And I think you'll get uh, some really good insights um, out of all of that. So I'm excited to, to share his interview with you. Let's jump in. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the show, Danny Galvez. Hello, sir. Good to see you, man. Man, this is like the, oh, so good. This is this is fun. I um, I was sharing with Danny a little little while ago that you know part of having the show and bringing people on, I, I certainly want, I don't know, whenever possible, shine a spotlight on them and 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 have them tell their story and get them in front of as many people as possible because they're doing such amazing things. Danny is one of those people. Um, but then also selfishly, I'm like, I just really want to talk to Danny again, you know? So glad you're here. This is, this has been fun already. We've been, we've been catching up a little bit. Um, so Danny, I, there's so much I want to dig into. Um, one thing to give people a little bit of insight and I'll go through some, some, some aspects of things that I've, I've seen, um, from you over the last few years. Danny is, gosh, let's, can we go down the list? I don't know if we can go down the list. You know, we have time for all the things that you do um, and have done. DJ, voiceover artist, host, salesman, but like continue the list for me there. MC, yeah, I'm a audio producer. So anything and everything audio, I produce that. Um, MC, hype man, audiobook narrator. Um, I am a, I'm a rabble rouser. When things are weird in a room, I show up and make them weirder just to break the weirdness. So, <laughs> and, and, and that's really my, my, my point too, like to describe you in a nutshell, what I really wanted, that picture I wanted to paint. And it, it honestly, it came to me this morning when I was, I was thinking about you. I was like, there's certain people who grab the mic and get up in front of people on video, live, any of that. And one type is they grab the mic because, hey, look at me. And there's another type that is they grab the mic and like, hey, everybody, let's do this thing. And and that's what I've noticed 
is you from the first time I met you um, at one of the you know events there, Break Free Academy, um, Ryan Stuman's deal. The, the I still remember meeting you there in Dallas, and it was such a blast to just connect in the middle of an aisle. Um, and, and that energy that so many people now have felt and been the beneficiary of and insights, all that came out in 30 seconds, you know, from meeting you. And I think that's fantastic. And I think you're that person who it's not about, oh, I want to stand up. So everyone looks at me because I got something to say. It's more like, hey, there's something we can do here together. Come on, everybody. Um, and I love that energy from you. Well, thank you. It took a long time. Um, you know, I started my career in radio. I was let me see, 19 years old, going on 20, and I had recorded a demo tape in a farmhouse because I'd gone to college, went that route. I dropped out after the first semester. I transferred to another school thinking, oh, I'll go for vocal performance and go sing. And I was supposed to go sing at the Viennese Festival. The Clintons were in office at that point, so I was supposed to make a grand appearance with this massive choir of 300 men. And I couldn't afford the tux. I couldn't afford the travel arrangements. And I wasn't even able to to stay in school. So I dropped out. I went to talk to my high school wow. guidance counselor. And I said, look, I got to go the tech tech route. I have to go for a technical degree. I can't live in this small farm town of 2000 people. It's in Wisconsin. And uh, I just happened to be there just through family. And, and I moved there and graduated high school, my senior year there. And she says, okay. She goes, there's a school called Brown Institute. At the time it was called Brown Institute. And basically they had a scholarship that they offered every year. You could go to Southfield, Michigan, or you could go to the school in Minneapolis, Minnesota. There are tons of people that applied for the scholarship. I don't know how many, but part of it was you had to go in and you had to figure out like how to make a demo tape. This was before all the fancy apps or anything like that. I didn't have Google. I didn't have a <laughs> primary you know, laptop set up. This is 1995, right. and I was not happy. I had a job at a grocery store in the dairy department. I was the dairy manager for a whopping six bucks an hour. And I would go home. I'd work 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. I'd offload the trucks. I'd stock the shelves. And I just wasn't happy. But I had this one conversation that I had with my guidance counselor said, listen, like, here's a scholarship. They give away one every single year. I went in. I made the demo tape in a farmhouse that I was living in. And I took it like it was back during when we had cassettes. So I take the cassette tape, record from one machine to the next machine. <laughs> I play a song over here and I'd be like, yeah, coming up next is Boys to Men, Water Runs Dry. And then it, it was, I, I did that. They had a few other questions and audio I had to answer, which was, you know, hey, who's the most inspirational person in your life, et cetera, et cetera. So I went through that, sent off the package. And that was it. Around April, I get a phone call, a voicemail. By the way, Danny, just want to let you know you won this year's scholarship. Call me back. I'll give you all the information. It was awesome. I was oh like, Oh my goodness. It was like winning the lottery. I was like, Oh yeah. Oh, this is good. This is my ticket out of here. So I worked feverishly to get my stuff together. And because the next session was going to start in June, it's like, All right. So I went one day in Minneapolis. I found a job at Finger Hut. And it was uh, Finger Hut's like a catalog company. So if you're, you know, you're beyond us younger than a, I'd say if you're younger than 40, then you might not know what Finger Hut is. The Finger Hut was like the Amazon for anything and everything overpriced that would fit your kitchen or your home. Right? They <laughs> right. Everything. I think you not quite Sky Mall, but like under, just under. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'd be paying three years on a laptop that would cost you $5,000 by the time you got done with it. <laughs> <laughs> or pillow jams, you know, you're, you're going, man, I can't believe we paid $89 just for that one, you know, <laughs> but you got payments. It was $10 a month. So I worked for that company in the sales department. So every night I would do that and I'd go to school during the day. So I went to radio school, worked at Finger Hut and I got to wear the headset and, you know, from four to 9 PM every night I was calling people across the United States. Hi, this is Danny from Finger Hut. Hi, how are you? Let me tell you about this great offer, reading scripts off the screen. So this is back when DOS was still awesome, right? You can, right. They can, you have to hit F12 to go to the next screen. Okay, hit F9 to go back, right? But it was it was a great experience. Um, I was shocked. And, and radio school was so great, I decided to extend it. So I ended up coming out of pocket like an extra nine months because I wasn't quite ready to go out into the world yet. So, but at 21, I became a DJ. And 
I could pretty much work at any radio station that would have me come in. And, and it was fantastic. That kind of started my journey. That's into awesome. My career. And yeah. doing it in like down the street from Prince, like that's just gotta be, you know? Yeah. That was, um, it's funny. You said that one of my, when I left, I got a job immediately. They always tell you to in radio school. They're like, look, you're not going to be on a major market radio station when you first come out, you can go work at one. So, but you'll probably be working in the background or working off air. So it'll be good for your resume. And I did that. I went and worked in music research at a country station. It was K one Oh two in Minneapolis. Travis moon was the, my, my director, the music director. And he probably, he probably doesn't remember me. He probably hates me because I was only there maybe four weeks because I said (laughs) out loud, I said, I don't want to do this job anymore. I want to be on the air. I went to school to be a DJ. I want to be on the radio. And so I called the school. They had a posting. They had an opening in Northfield, Minnesota, like 45 minutes south of Minneapolis. Boom. I went in for the interview a week later. Two weeks later, I'm on the, on the, on the radio. Wow. So. Heck yeah. So you've got this like yeah. one in a million scholarship offer that gets you there, gets you that experience. Boom. Now you're down on the air. Oh man, that's, that's fantastic. And you've kept, and then, you know, probably, you know, didn't want to do it necessarily, but what an amazing skill set to have at the finger hut place, you know, <laughs> being that sales experience and just, you know, being kind of forced to, to do those reps. Oh man. Phenomenal skill set. It was great. And, you know, you talk about that because I think everybody's had, you know, like subpar jobs at that time. I was looking for something different. So I worked another job too. So, cause I didn't have to, I'd be done with school at noon. So I was like, well, I need to make more money. I'm living on my own. At that time I was renting, I was renting a basement room and it had a bed and everything carpeted for like 35 bucks a week. That was all utilities included. I couldn't nice. have anybody in the house. I had to tolerate a cat. The lady I lived with, she had nine cats in her house. Oh and there was gosh. one one wild one that would come down and I'd wake up and there'd be a cat, you know, on my on my chest, and I'd be like, ah. you know, just <laughs> ah. you know, it's like, what are you doing? So, you say, Well, 35 bucks. <laughs> yeah, right? I was like, what are you doing here, kitty? So I I tolerated that. I'm like, don't forget, you know, it's like it's, you can, you're paying 35 bucks a week. It's great. You know, don't worry about it. So I went and worked at like Subway and I went and worked at another place. It was called Perkins family restaurant. It's like IHOP, the equivalent of IHOP, but I started waiting tables and really getting out. I learned, Hey, I could make more money in less time waiting tables. So, um, everything I was doing was the same. Would you like wheat or white bread? Okay. That's cool. So instead of making seven bucks an hour, I went and, you know, started making, you know, 12, 15 bucks an hour waiting tables, depending on, on the day. So, it was, uh, it was a pretty good experience. And, and I kept with radio for about 17 years. And a lot of what I did was, you know, produce audio. I was like a, like a scientist. I would spend a lot of my late nights there. I didn't have a family or anything like that. So I didn't have somebody waiting for me. I didn't have a girlfriend that was like, hey, when are you coming home? Are we going to go out? No, I was focused on really honing my craft. I was enjoying the things that I was doing. So I might get to the station at eight in the morning and not go home until midnight. And I loved it because that was my practice time. That was when I was going in there to cut my teeth, to hone my skills, to really think about where I wanted my life to go. I was yeah. create, and that was that was powerful. And and there's so much, there's so much benefit to that. You know, obviously we've heard the you know the ten thousand hour rule, but there's there's such truth to that, and especially when you are when it's on your own, it's because you want to, and maybe you wouldn't have sat back and designed that set of circumstances and you you would have that amount of time to work on stuff. But when you do looking back, you would, you know, because you see that value in it, right? Like looking that amount of hours of just figuring it out, those little insights, those little things that build over time. I mean, there's probably, little things, technical things that you use now that, you know, you, that you built that skill way back then and is stuck around this whole time. I did. No. And, and it's, you know, part of it was technology, emerging technology. So in radio school, they taught us there's something called reel to reels, but you had to get 
you had to get physical with it. You'd have a little a blade, like something you used to cut up cocaine with in the eighties. Um, but there was like a little razor blade and you would take that and you'd have to splice the tape on the reel to reels to be able to make an edit. And then you have to go back in and paste it. You'd have to tape it up and you'd have to go back and play it again. And if, if it didn't come out right, you'd have to go back in and re-record it. So I got to do that. But as that technology switched over, we started going, you know, digital. We went from analog to digital. And, you know, I had fun doing that, you know, mix. It was like, like I said, a lab. I had a, a, a reel-to-reel player over here, but then I had the computer over here. And we were just getting into the beginnings of, you know, recording audio. And and I was, I took full advantage of, of my time there. And, and it was wonderful because, those skill sets, like you said, in that time, those countless hours, those repetitions that I took, developed my hearing, my ability to create a good ear, as they call it, um, which is funny because, you know, when I was married, apparently I, I didn't hear anything. Um, yeah. Man hearing, right? It's kind of like when you go to the fridge, hey, where's the, where's the fruit? It's right there in front of you. If I had teeth, it would bite your face <laughs> off, right? But, you know, I was able to hone that skill. In, in listening to audio and, and really develop, you know, the way that people speak, to listen how they say things, what they're saying. Um, is there underlying intention behind what they're saying? Are they masking something? So I took this deep dive as I was listening and creating audio and, and, and putting together things. It wasn't just a job of things that had to be put together. I listened to the way that people spoke and communicated. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. spoken word is powerful. It'll change your life. Yeah. And, and, and I, it's so interesting. It's, 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 it's awesome to, to have this insight into your backstory, your origin story <laughs> a little bit, you know, from, from meeting you all these years later. And really what inspired this episode too is seeing more and more how much you share just the gratitude of where you are, um, the ability to, inspire others with just sharing that, sharing the gratitude that you have for where you are in life and, you know, coming through, you know, a big shift, a big transformation over the last couple of years from the organization you were with changing that, how you, you work with them physically moving, you know, sorry to say down to Houston. Sorry. Yeah. Danny, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it's Dallas it's okay. snobbery over here, you know, like, <laughs> it's just it's so dang hot down there, Danny. It's so humid. Uh, but having that transformation in, in what I guess I'm curious about, because that's a it's it's an it's a skill I admire in you on how much you share what you've been going through as you've gone through this transformation. What's what sparks that that just ability to share, desire to share, and and to do it in the the really honest, vulnerable way that you do. I think a lot of it is so part of the inspiration from that is and it's not so much about the way that people communicate now. You have people that are one thing that I've always valued is people telling me the truth. I want to know the truth. If I ask a question, I want to know why. And some people wouldn't tell me that. And that was the only thing I was after. Like, I I wasn't going to leverage the information. I just need to know why. Because if mm. I understand why, I understand how to put it together and make it work. But Give me an example. Like, you know, what, do you, what do you mean? Well, I'll give you an example. So, like, hey, you need to go over here and, and put this in the system. Why? Well, the reason why you need to do it is because A, B, C, D, and E. There's an emotional connection that has to happen. Um, and, and I know that's, that, that probably seems a little vague, but like when I was in mortgage, I worked in the mortgage industry as a loan officer after my radio career kind of like came to a, a immediate halt in 2009. Um, I, I had to parlay my talents and, and jump into something else because I had two younger children at the time I had an older child as well, but, um, I had responsibilities I had a big house, I had a big backyard, I had things that I had to take care of. And so I went into, to work mode and to hustle mode. So I went and learned everything that I could in the mortgage industry, but they used a lot of acronyms. And I would say, hey, what does, you know, what does CD mean? Why do you need to know that? Well, I need to know so that I can explain 
to our client who's frustrated because they don't know why we need the CD or what it is, you know? And my main objective for that was to break things down where, you know, everybody could understand it. But where does it start? It starts with connection. It starts with being genuine. When I worked in radio, I worked with a lot of fake people. I worked with a lot of people that were there were gods on the air, but off air, they're terrible human beings. These are not these are not the superheroes. That's almost like they had it's a dichotomy of a of a human being that was it was ugly. It was nasty. Mm-hmm. Be like, hey, what's up? How's it going? It's Johnny Rocket in the morning. And then off air, he's cursing at people or chewing them out, right? Wow. Throwing his ego around and his weight. And for me, I always said, I was like, you know, what kind of DJ am I going to be? What kind of human being am I going to be? You know, because that's really, they always tell you in radio, like, just be yourself. And that didn't click with me for a long time until I got that experience and worked with people. So taking all of that now and delivering that, um, you know, you made a reference of grabbing a mic. I don't grab a microphone because I want people to look at me. Fame is not real. I don't need the attention of everybody else because I love myself. I have something I have to say, though. It's inside of me that I have to share it because if I don't get it out, it's still going to keep coming up for whatever reason. So when I deliver things the way that I do, I don't really have to. I imagine that it's just you and me like we're we're sitting here now together in a room. or Maybe we're sitting on a couch having a conversation. That's where people listen. That's where people will absorb the message that you're trying to deliver. And I know that's a a little bit deeper than probably what most people understand in terms of, you know, like I have something to say. I'm just going to tell somebody something. Well, a lot of the things that we have challenges with in this world can be solved if somebody just takes the time to explain the why or makes themselves emotionally available to create that safe space so that you can release the things that you need to say. Yeah. And, and I think another one of the benefits is when you share what you're going through or an insight that you've garnered from somebody else going through something, whatever that may be, it's relatable. It allows that listener to say, Oh man, Awesome. Thank goodness it's not just me. I mean, there's so much power in that. Um, and maybe it even gets lost on me at times. I think uh, I'm fortunate enough to have amazing people in my life who we have those kinds of conversations, personal development and, you know, insight and struggles and all of that stuff. But I get reminded periodically that that's not the norm that so many people out there don't have that deeper conversation or deeper level of insight that you just talked about with anybody in their life from spouse or friends or anything. And so to get a little bit of that on a Facebook live from Danny one night, sometimes that's everything to spark a realization in them to go, Oh, okay, there's something more here and I'm not the only one who's been going through this. Awesome. And now they can take that next step. That's right. You know, I think, I think for us to understand the reasons we do things, we have to understand why. So most people say, well, you have to understand why you're doing the things you're doing. That'll tell you the reason. But when you are, have something within you that needs to be talked about. You said, if you share it, you're going to, you're going to solve a lot of problems. You're going to help a lot of people that you don't even know that you won't even meet. I get DMS sometimes from people and be like, Hey man, I saw this thing and you were talking about X, Y, Z that impacted me. Okay, cool. Sometimes it's about kids. I remember uh, there's a point where I was sharing my journey from, you know, we talked about this a little bit, but being liberated from marriage, Call it liberated, not divorced. You only get divorced one time. So depending on who you are, but liberation and talking about the challenges of going from seeing your kids every day for 10 years to not seeing them, there's an impact. But out of that came other conversations. I had other men reaching out to me. I had women reaching out to me, right? And 
you know, it, it creates a conversation that a lot of people want to have, but they don't know how to start the conversation. So they just carry it with them. Right. You know, like we're, we're limited in what we can do, but that's also points to the, the, the essence of being here on this planet together too. We have the ability to help one another. Number one, by listening. Number two, by sharing. Those are the two. And, and those are things, they don't cost any money. Right. They don't cost right. except for time, right? It costs a little bit of time. And when you truly listen to someone, you're going to have to expend a little bit of energy. But just being there, being present for them is priceless. Oh, yeah. Because we're doing, doing it in communion, right? Think about it like we're balls of energy. If we didn't have our souls or our spirits, we would cease to exist. We'd be lifeless. But when you have two masses of energy together, what happens, right? Now you have a conversation. Now you're able to get things taken care of because you have an added energy source. So, and I just, yeah, and it's, and that's the thing. And I know it's different for everybody, but that's the great stuff in life to me is that conversation is that connection point. Obviously I feel that way. That's why I do this, right? <laughs> like, it's just, that's, right. I don't know. That's everything to me. That's life. I remember a very conscious decision. Um, I was still in high school of I'm going to be the greatest listener ever because I didn't have that at home. <laughs> you know, it was that, 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 feeling of just not only should you you know are there is there a skill set around listening and hearing that other person but for them to feel like you're listening and you hear them and you're taking everything in those are two very different things and just that part of it alone forget what insights you may have and share and all of that stuff just that part of of being there for somebody can be everything. I mean, how many times I'm sure you've, you've experienced it, as many events as you go to and all of that, that stuff of just being there listening to somebody and they introduce you to someone who's just like, Oh Dan, he's just the greatest conversationalist I've ever met. Like he's just the greatest. And all you did was just like, uh huh. Uh huh. And you asked a couple of questions and, you know, let them talk and share their story. And it's, I don't know, it's powerful. It is. No. And that's, I mean, it's healing too. Some people need to be heard. They need to speak. Uh, some people grab the mic because of that very thing you said, like, I need to be heard. I have something I got to say, but there's no, it's my, my not be ego based. It might be because they have to release something within them mm. and they need somebody to listen to them. Right. And like you said, all we have to do is just sit there and ask a couple questions and let them talk for them. That's a therapeutic process. And they do think you're number one. They do think you're awesome. Because you took the time to care and listen. And I, I think it's one of the most um, underrated superpowers that, that we have as human beings. You know, we've got two ears. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, <laughs> and the, the beauty of all this, too, and I'm glad it's more in the conversation out in the world now than before. But all of this stuff that we're talking about quote unquote, soft skills, right? Um, it's good business, you know? Yeah. So for, for the folks out there who are, maybe they're on the fence and ah, hooey, I don't care. And if nothing else, start by, start by doing it for, for good business as well. And you'll, you'll discover the, 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 the broader, more human benefits too. But um, I love the fact that we don't have to sacrifice business in order to do everything that we're talking about. And in fact, it's quite the opposite. Uh, I mean, Gary Vaynerchuk's new book just came out. It's all about that, right? It's those soft skills that um, he's seen be so valuable to growing the organization that he's grown. You know, all of these, you know, letting people in your organization feel heard, seen, and understand and just like you're talking about give them that 30 seconds of explanation why you need them to go do something can change everything it does and that's the thing like 
I think some, and this goes back to performance too, uh, in inspiring people and motivating them too, especially if you're running a business. If I like to know why, because if I can emotionally connect to it, I'm probably going to do a better job with it. I might not agree with it, but I'll go do it if I can emotionally connect to it. I have to access some type of emotion to be able to go, okay, this is really important. This is why it's important. And this is why it has to get done. When I understand that, I do a better job yeah. across the board. But if it's like, if it's a transactional thing and just say, here, I need you to take this and, 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 and plug it in. Why? You know? Um, and it's, it's funny. Cause I used to, I used to test managers when I worked in, in corporate and they, they, they would hate it too. Cause in corporate, they don't want you to ask questions, but a lot of this life that we're in, you, you have to ask questions. We're constantly on quest to find out reasons, purpose, connection, like, why wouldn't you ask questions? But, but we're we were operating in a system that that wasn't serving our humanity very well. So that very thing that you said, giving people time to speak and say what they need to say, so important, so valuable. So um, from the standpoint of operating a business too, you know, there's it doesn't take much to light and ignite somebody. And, and so much of it is, is transactional. So much of it is, is business like, but the business, yeah. Is it important? Absolutely. You know what it does? It, it takes care of payroll, it takes care of payroll taxes. It takes care of benefits and time off and support and all that stuff. But by listening, we can get more business. And uh, I'll give you an example. Cause it just happened this morning and somebody called me, I like he hit me in the DM out of the blue. He's like, Hey man, um, I got a business idea for you. Do you have a couple minutes? Absolutely. So I call him and I'm like, Hey man, what's going on? Well, I'm doing this and I've got this, this, and this, and I've got an on hold message and, you know, I'm in, under a contract and these guys are, you know, charging me X, Y, Z dollars a month. And I'm just, so I listened to him and I kept listening. I was like, he's like, is this something you could help me with? I was like, yeah, absolutely. So I had no expectations. I had no standards for what I was going to do for him outside of like, what would you like to have done? He comes back and tells me finally and reveals because there's always truth in the conversation. You just have to listen closely for it. He says, I'm cleaning up some things and doing some auditing. And basically what he told me was he didn't like the experience because they were hard nosed. And number two, they're overcharging him and they had him over committed. They had him committed. They lock stock and barrel like, like a relationship shouldn't have to be locked under a contract. And you and I talked about this too, but that simple exchange of listening was able to solve a couple of problems for him. So I just said, okay, great. I'm easy to work with. I'm not going to lock you into a contract. When do you want this done by? Fantastic. If you need this, this is what we'll do. Listening, helping, I guarantee you it's going to probably bring more business than I know what to do with just because I had one simple conversation on a random, you know, morning when somebody's like, Hey man, this kept me up last night at 3 AM. He hit me. He goes, I've been up thinking about this. Got woken up with this in my head. Okay, cool. Get it out. Let's talk about it. I can probably help you. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And it, I do that with folks on, you know, connecting on LinkedIn, right? Like just, Hey, let's just have a conversation in just like you talked about that same, no expectation, just there's a reason we should connect. And especially with, you know, if, if folks make an introduction, like, Oh, you should meet so-and-so. Okay. Like there's, I've just gotten to that point, you know, years ago that it's not about, well, who are they? Why are we talking? What's going on? It's just like, Okay. Cool, because there's been too many great relationships built, and whether business came out of it or not, like just that those connection points. There's been too many great ones for me to to question that anymore. <laughs> you know, I just like, all right, let's do it. Let's let's talk. Let's see what happens. Um, and you meet those folks who were ha- had that that same mindset. Oh, that's that's a blast. Yeah, it's amazing. But you know, like. As an entrepreneur too, and you understand this, like, how do you organize that? Like, you know, like you're obviously you're like, well, is this a good investment of my time? Right. Sure. Cause that sometimes we get roped into things that we're like, yeah, you know what? I probably didn't need to hear this today, or I probably didn't need to be in this conversation today. 
or, yeah. Yeah, you it, know, how, how do you balance that? Yeah. And, and, and I think doing that with, with boundaries, um, both, you know, internal, so not being afraid to, you know, pull the cord early, you know, if you're having that conversation with somebody, you're just like, uh, all right, <laughs> you just know because you are listening <laughs> and you've done this enough with folks. You're just like, I gotcha. <laughs> I know, I know who you are. We've never met, but I know you. Uh, yeah. Then to be able to, to pull that cord early. Um, and also, you know, when it comes to, you know, networking overall, whether through LinkedIn, virtually in person, all of that is just doing that having that set amount of time, you know, for both reasons, like this, is, this is the time I can do this. So you have those boundaries with somebody, but then also fill that time up, you know, and be purposeful with, okay, I'm going to make sure I'm doing this every week, every month, whatever that may be for you. Um, Cause otherwise you look up and it's been six months and you haven't really met anybody new and you haven't been talking, you've just had your head down and working. And um, so it's important for both of those reasons. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's powerful. You know, like, I think out of everything, all the experiences, you know, that that we have in life, you know, there's a lot to be grateful for. There's a lot to be grateful for. Even the ones that weren't so great. Like, I'm grateful for my experiences in corporate. I'm grateful for my experiences in working in radio, coming to the realization, oh, my God, like, these guys aren't perfect or they're not really gods, right? Or they showed me the dark side. Okay, cool. I'm grateful for that because I knew – like, that's not what people want. And people talk, they tell you things. You're like, I don't like that person. Mm-hmm. They're not a good human being or like, they don't make me feel good or they're, you know, a little handsy or, you know, whatever that is. So, you know, when I'm, we're engaging in conversations, you know, my main thing is like, okay, why are we going to meet? Because I'm looking for a way that I can help you. Like immediately before we get into the conversation, it's like, what can I do for this person or who do I know that I can connect them with that is going to help solve a multitude of of challenges for them. I don't call them problems, right? Because problems can be solved. Challenges you'll always have, but like you can just get over those, right? There's you're gonna have challenges in anything and everything you do, whether it be in your personal life or in business. But it's all relationship based. It's all it all starts with listening and and having a servant's heart to say, all right, let me see if I can help them, right? Let me see if I can help them. No chains, no ties, no expectations. How are we gonna get there? Yeah. Now can I you know? So, yeah, I love it. I want to, I want to dig into, to some of these endeavors that you have going on right now and really, um, your main focus, um, cause I think it's fascinating and fun and smart <laughs> all. Um, so, so tell me about the, the business you have going on right now. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm involved in quite a few things and I am, you know, everything is voiced and it took me a long time to come to this conclusion, but the business I have is called Voice Your Life. I just Voice Your Life Media. I just launched it probably less than a month ago. I've been doing all the work leading up to it, the voiceover. Audiobooks, I got into audiobooks when I was in the mortgage industry. I'd go into the fourth bedroom of my home, sit down, audition for titles, and start narrating. I did everything from business books, education books, all the way to romance, romance and erotica. Because they were like they're pretty popular. So um, I just got a deposit in my account from work that I did five years ago this morning. Wow. So, you know, that still comes. That's the residual income, the contracts and the agreements. Um, and I did that as a hobby, but I also was looking for a way out to establish legacy. And, and a lot of the reason why I started Voice Your Life is because we are at a time in human history where more than ever, we've got access to be able to record, to document, we can video, we can take pictures. And, and that's across, I mean, we want to do it with music. We can do it with music. The technology is so affordable that you can make the investment and pretty much create a library based on a legacy. So like you right now, Jason, your great, great grandchildren will be able to watch you 70 years from now, 80 years from now, 100 years from now, 120 years from now, Right. Because of the content that you created today, the conversation that we're having will continue on forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Right. So same concept too with the podcast, like podcasting, really huge part of what I do is I produce and edit the audio 
and handle the fulfillment and produce podcasts. I work with a lot of narrators and authors. So I narrate a lot of books, but I also, right now, the big push is to actually have the author narrate their own book. It ties into genuinity. A lot of them have their own podcast anyways. And the other thing is their audience wants to hear their voice, not the voice of someone else. So, you know, I kind of help coach them through that process and help them with fulfillment, editing, producing. And, but voice your life is a lot bigger than that. So the tagline is audio powered legacy in the future. If I need to access anything on any subject, we've been doing this for years, right? They've had audio tapes out from the very beginning, right? They have presidential speeches, fireside chats recorded from a long, long time ago since the advent of radio, right? They figured it out. They figured out how to record things. We have so much technology available to us to be able to create a library that we can pass down to generations. We can share with the world, share your knowledge, your experiences. Um, and that's what that's what um, Voice Your Life is is predicated on. There's a lot more to it. There's uh, it's just a matter of you know we talk about business a little bit, but sitting down you go, okay, I have this concept. Okay, great. What are you going to do? It's not about transacting and supporting the business. It's what's bigger than yourself. Are you creating something that's going to be bigger than yourself? That's why it's not called Danny Galvez. It's called Voice Your Life. What you say out loud can come true. Right? I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, a great layer to that that's that's so strong because man, there <laughs> there is such truth to that. Go way back to, you know, what you voiced out loud, I don't want to be here, I want to be on the air. <laughs> and you and it gets you there. You know, it, and it really there is a there is a power to that, to owning it just if nothing else for yourself. This is what I stand for. This is what I want. This is what I'm doing next. Even the difference that that makes between it's in here swirling around to vocalizing it just to yourself. It's huge. And I, and I love that. I love the idea of voice your life, you know, in all these different areas. Is there, man, it can go in so many, I know it's brand new, but, um, I mean, you, you take the idea of podcast, audio book, like all of those things. I think there's a, there's a thing, right? There's a thing that is its own animal, um, you know, conversations, y y just recording just for legacies purpose, right? I think there's, there's power in that and opportunity there of maybe somebody that doesn't want to do, you know, a weekly podcast and this and that. But they, but they understand that power of legacy. They know they have something to share, even for their own just family, you know, about their life, telling their story. And I think capturing that, it was never written as a book, but just capturing it in audio form, only creating this sort of audio journal or audio book, I think could be amazing. Yeah, no, and that's the thing. And, and that kind of came to me. I'm like, what if we had, because my brother and I, we were talking about this and part of me being in Houston is because a lot of my blood family is here. My children are here. Um, and, and I still commute, you know, to Dallas to work with apex and host a live events and MC. That's still part of my agreement. They're my number one client. So, um, you know, voice your life is tied in and integrated into multiple organizations. But part of us being here when I came here is because my brother reminded me, he said, remember when we were kids, we said we were going to start a business. I said, yes. And he did. He just, he just, I picked him up yesterday from his job. He was working as a commercial HVAC technician. And for him to make that leap was huge. But I came and picked him up. He's like, hey, can you come pick me up? I have to turn in my work truck. And it was great. It was like picking somebody up from prison. Um, and I'm not saying, listen, if you got a job, that's fantastic. Sure. But for me to see my brother leave that structure. He was just gung ho. He was in the union. He's still in the union, but you know, he's got his card, but just that structure, he, he made a commitment to leave that so that he can go build legacy. And what he did was he, he bought into a franchise. It's going to be perfect. Mosquito shield going to be really huge. So just because we're, you know, we're down, we're down South, right? Houston gets a lot of mosquitoes, but it's not about the business. It's about the fact that he made the commitment to leave because he knows as he's about to become a father for the first time at 42, 
his job is not going to be enough to provide that legacy. And he and I together are working. So I was like, well, you start your business. I'm going to start mine. I've got a lot of marketing sales and branding background. So I know how to get attention to help feed his business. That's going to feed his family, but us together got plenty of business over here. So as we join forces, we're going to create something that our family, anybody attached to our lineage will be able to look back and say, all right, I'm stuck. Okay, great. Go and watch the, the module on money matters. Go watch the module on relationships. Go watch the module on X, Y, Z. Go watch the module on how to start a business. Go watch the model module on raising children. That's how big we want to do that for ourselves, for our family. So and, that. And how powerful. You know, it's one thing to go watch a YouTube video of someone talking about those items. It's a whole different level when it is, well, let me go hear how my grandfather did that, <laughs> you know, and that extra insight, like, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's amazing. It's a huge thing. And I haven't mapped everything out, but I know that there's going to be cause for it. Think about, think about it. The wealthiest families in the world, the 1%, right? The, whatever you want to call it, you can call them the Illuminati, the 1%, 10 old white dudes in a, in a boardroom someplace like, there are families of like, think of the Medici's, right? Like the, you know, medieval times and, and all of these powerful families, all these, you know, I mean, all the Kings, the Kings of the world that roamed and ruled the earth. You know, how did they educate their lineage? How did they, you know, how did they keep their, their family line going? How did they, like, you had to come to court. You had to educate yourself. You had to serve. You had to learn as much as you could, but they only had to hear it directly from those people were being in the process of doing that work. And, you know, I think for us, like I wish at 21 or 22, I would have had somebody to leave me some information, leave me a clue because at that time, 1995, you had to go search. The information was there, but you have to go search each different oh. outlet, you oh, know? Yeah. I mean, now we've got the internet. We've got access to pretty much anything we need. Ask Siri, ask Google. They know all the answers because we are the ones that ask the questions and we are also the ones that provided all the answers. So why not document what that next iteration of life looks like? At some point, somebody's going to go, hey, remember when we used to get on Skype or Zoom? <laughs> yeah, that's that's crazy. In the future, we'll be able to click a tip and be able to record out of the air. Right. You know, this dystopian future is coming. Maybe not a dystopian future, but maybe it's a utopian future. You never know. So I'm just kind of thinking – in that direction, I'm like, how powerful would it be to say to my grandchild, I have a grandchild, he's two years old as of the time of this recording, but how powerful would it be to say, hey man, before you start dating, you need to go and watch this module. Or hey, <laughs> you start working, you need to go watch the finance module that your uncle put together for you or your, or your grandfather, right? So just something to think about. I love it. I love it. So how can how can people connect with you and, and find out more about this new endeavor and everything else that you have going on? Absolutely. You can email me, Danny, at voiceyourlifemedia.com or connect with me on Instagram at Danny Galvez number two. So those are probably the easiest ways. A simple DM will work just great. Just, hey, let me know. Like, hey, I heard you on Jason's show and not trying to be weird or anything, but, you know. I get a lot of Bitcoin people, a lot of Forex and Bitcoin people. They follow me. So. <laughs> it's really funny to see that. You know, it's like, well, like, that's weird. Like sports cars have nothing to do with Forex. Why are you? What? What? So, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, just come correct. It will be good. So, I love it, Danny. It's been a blast. Thanks so much for being on. Thanks, man. Thanks so much for tuning in and being a part of this show. If you ever need help building out custom strategies for your business or deciding what actions to take next, head over to medialeadsco.com and let's connect. I'll talk to you soon on the next Strategy and Action. <laughs>